All right, guys, let's get some NCAA basketball picks and props for Tuesday, April 2nd, Slated Games. Trey, leaderboard, starts off. Yeah, guys, I failed you just barely. I gave out Purdue to score over their 75.5 team total against Tennessee. First half looked good. Second half had me sweating and just hit the under. They scored 72 points. Yeah, and I had a no-sweat bet in the second half. I had NC State plus 7.5 going up against Duke. Our darlings, they're alive. NC State against Purdue. I cannot wait for DJ Burns against Zach Eadie. She'll be electric basketball. Try to go to the player props. Have you start us off. Yeah, guys, when we swept the player props, which that felt good, I gave out Dalton Connect over 21.5 points versus Purdue. I had it even more no sweat bet bear because he scored 37 shout out dalton connect nba here he comes yeah talking about no sweat bets here dj burns newton's second law force equals mass time acceleration he poured in nearly 30 against kyle filipowski we only needed 13 and a half he was a big part he was the reason they won that game it wasn't a big part he was the reason they won that game so he dominated kyle filipowski we go 2-0 and as a team there trey let's sweep the board today have you start us off yeah guys i'm excited to talk about my game today I'm going to take us over to the NIT tournament. That's the two games that me and Bear are going to be breaking down today. And I'm going to be talking about what I believe is the best game on the slate, this Utah versus Indiana State game. I have bet on both these teams throughout this season. I love me some Gabe Madsen for Utah, and I love me some Robbie Avila for Indiana State. And give me what feels like the home team in this game in Indiana State. I'm going to take them at minus two and a half here. If you want to sprinkle some on the money line, put some extra units, I I love that as well. But minus two and a half, I feel like uh, we can have a three-point win at the very least for the Sycamores. That's because this is going to be a home game for them, basically. This game is being held in Indianapolis, Indiana, not too far. I think it's an hour and 45-minute drive for Indiana State. So there's going to be a ton of Sycamore fans in the stands. And Utah, they did surprise me with their absolute beatdown of VCU just a few days ago. But Indiana State, they've been answering the bell against Power 5 teams throughout the NIT because Indiana State, they beat SMU, Minnesota, and Cincinnati to get here, winning those games by an average score of 87-79. to 79. So their offense has simply been, been playing at an elite level. And the reason why I believe in Indiana State to control this game is because of how efficient their offense is. As a team, they shoot 50.2% from the field. That's the third highest percentage in all of college basketball. So over half their shots go in the hoop. That is pretty impressive. And whenever we combine that, with this just being basically a home game for the Sycamores, I expect them to be able to, to control this game throughout. Give me Indiana State. I'm going to take them minus two and a half against Utah. Yep, I do love the play there. Uh, I'm going to be breaking on the other NIT matchup between Georgia and Seton Hall. Seton Hall should have made the NCAA tournament. Uh, I think everybody agrees with that. Uh, they're playing some great basketball right now, but so is Georgia. Georgia got the ultimate upset in their last game against Ohio State, winning by two points as an eight and a half underdog. We were actually on Georgia in that game. Now Seton Hall is only minus four and a half in this spot because they're not going to be at home. That seems that the higher seed got to host, but now with all, all the NIT almost being done, we have these neutral court games, and this game is going to be played at Hinky Fieldhouse. That is home of the Butler Bulldogs of the Big East. And Seton Hall just happens to be in the Big East and has played a ton at Hinky Fieldhouse because they have the advantage of playing on the court multiple times and have already played on the, that court this season. They beat Butler, by the way, scoring 78 points. I'm going to take Seton Hall here to cover the spread, minus four and a half. Georgia, again, they've been playing really good basketball. They took down two of the best teams in the NIT, Wake Forest and Ohio State. But Seton Hall can play lockdown defense, and I don't know if Georgia can play any defense. Georgia, they want to get out. They love to run. They're a fast-paced, high-scoring team. Seton Hall is a very efficient team, and they can wear you down in this game. They will play very physical basketball. They are very quick on the defensive side with their hands, forcing a ton of turnovers. I think Georgia's going to finally meet their match in this one. Give me Seton Hall minus 4.5 with the familiar court and the better defensive play. Trey, let's go to the props. Have you start us off? Yeah, guys, I'm going to go in my same game here. I'm going to take Robbie Avila to go over 17 and a half points against Utah. <laughs> I really love this over for Avila in this game because we're going to see him put his stamp on throughout this game. He's simply on a mission to prove that the NCAA screwed them over and quite possibly to secure a massive NIL bag in the transfer portal. Either way, I expect Avila to absolutely dominate in this game because that's what he's done throughout this season. He has taken a slight step back during the NIT where he's only averaged 15.3 points per game. But in his last game against Cincinnati, he poured on 22 points in that one. And I kind of expect him to reach 20-plus points here in this one because he's going to leave everything out there on the table. And Avila, he's played in three neutral side games so far this year. And in those games, he averaged 18.7 points per game, which is over this number. And 
Robbie, he's going to be going up against Utah's seven-footer. But I think that is a great matchup for us, especially because Avila loves to play on the perimeter and loves to play off the bounce. Two things that seven-footers really just are not great at defending. So give me Robbie Avila. I'm going to take him to go over 17.5 points versus Utah. Yeah, Trey, I like that play there. For my player prop tonight, it's going to be Kadaria Richmond to go over his total points going up against Georgia. Seton Hall has three incredible guards. I'd say Richmond's the best player on this team, though. In the regular season, he was scoring 15.6 points per game. He also filled out the stat sheet, collecting 6.7 rebounds per game, 5.1 assists, and he shot 44.2% from the field in the regular season. I mentioned in the game pick that they're going to be playing on Butler's home court, and whenever Seton Hall went to Butler earlier in the season, Richmond had his best game of the year. He scored a season-high 24 points against Butler on the road, making eight of his 18 shots. He shot 44.4% from the field, and he was everywhere in that game playing 34 minutes. I know that they're not playing Butler, but it's good to see that he had his best shooting performance of the season on that floor, and I think he can duplicate that against this Georgia defense. Ohio State, they were able to put up 77 points against Georgia. Seton Hall against really good defensive teams, 75 against St. Joseph, 72 against North Texas. This offense can score some points. Richmond's coming off a 16-point game against UNLV. He only shot nine times in that game as well. This is a very effective offense. This is a very effective player. Give me Kadari Richmond to go over his total points as the play. Trey, let's go to the graphic. Have you start us off? Yeah, guys, I'm going to go with Indiana State here, minus two and a half against Utah. Basically a home game for them. In my opinion, they <laughs> are the better team. I feel like they got snubbed and they're on a mission. Also going with Robbie Avila to go over 17 half points versus Utah. Same thing, rinse and repeat on a mission. Maybe NIL bag coming his way. Who knows? Yep, a double same game parlay for us. Seton Hall minus four and a half, familiar court. I think they're going to take down Georgia here, cover the spread. And they give me Kadari Richmond to go over his total points against Georgia. Again, the Georgia defense hasn't been great. The Seton Hall offense has been very good. So I love the over points for their best player in that game. Guys, that's going to do it for the NCAA basketball plays and props for Tuesday, April 2nd slate of games. If you guys enjoyed the content, please be sure to drop a like in this video and subscribe to the channel below. See you guys next video, and thanks for watching. Bowl. We also have 12,000 subs coming right around the bend. We're at 10,200. We're going to give away two tickets to anybody, to any game they want, NBA, NFL, college basketball. It doesn't matter. We can wait until the new season for NFL. Any game you want to go, whenever we get to 12K, we're going to have that uh, giveaway coming up as well. Leaderboard. We had multiple questions this morning about how to become a member for the YouTube channel. Let's do that really quick tutorial. You're going to go to YouTube.com. You're going to go to Bears Profit Plays. You're going to search it in. You're going to hit our thing. There's a join button right just to the right of the subscribe. You're going to click that. There's two options. You have the Bear Pack for $4.99. That gives you access to YouTube member plays. And then you have the Bear Pack Gold for $7.99 a month. That gives you access to our member plays on YouTube. And it gives you a one-month membership to our website, bearsprofitplays.com. So if you get the Bear Pack Gold, you save yourself 2 bucks a month. A little bit cheaper if you want to do that. But that is the tutorial for anybody that needed it. We had multiple questions today through email about how to do it, and it wasn't working. But if you want to know, there it is right there. Trey, 